Hi friends and welcome to the Ian Khan show. You're listening to a special episode of the Aftershock series which where I interview co-contributors to the recent book Aftershock. My guest today is Daniel Levine who's one of the world's best known trends experts. He's named the ultimate guru of cool by CNN and he's a frequent guest on TV and radio. He's the director of Avant-Garde Institute based out of New York and helps people understand the future. Let's speak with Daniel Hi, Daniel. Welcome to the Ian Khan Show. Hey, I'm so excited to be speaking with you because you are quite the man. You are the person who is the go-to person for trends. And you've been doing this for many, many years. You and I are both part of uh, Aftershock. This is something our good friend uh, John Schroeder put together. And we'll talk about that and many other things in the few minutes. Welcome to the Ian Khan Show. Yeah, thank you, Ian. It's a, a, a pleasure to be here. Uh, and uh, I, I wish we were here in person, but I guess that's going to have to wait uh, a, a little bit. So COVID has changed the world. I don't know, and I don't think Toffler wrote about that among <laughs> many things that he did. But it's really, I mean, I've been speaking with so many different people. Nobody was expecting it. Yes, everybody knows there are many viruses and they are sitting in some labs, but nobody was expecting this kind of change to happen to an everyday world. Right. What are your thoughts of this 2020 being the year of COVID-19? You know, there's really only one story this year, right? It's, it's the main thing that's affecting so many people's lives. And it's where it's going to go. I think, you know, a lot of the people who you're interviewing on your podcast have a lot of ideas about that. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into some of those things today. Where I think I'm probably different from many of the people that you speak with is I don't consider myself a futurist. Uh, I consider myself a trends expert. And by that, I mean, I don't look at sort of pie in the sky prognostications about what might be happening 50 years from now. I'm really looking at the next, you know, three to five years and even closer in than that based on things that we're actually going through right now. So my specialty, along with the Avant Guide Institute, is looking at changes that are happening in culture as we are living them and then extrapolating what that may look like. And I think that's important because it's really difficult for most people to see where they are when they're in the middle of it. You know, so many people right now are freaking out about, uh, about the future, the near future, uh, because it's hard to see what the next few months are gonna look like when you're so deeply impacted by what's going on right now. Do you agree? Yeah. Yep, yep, absolutely. And bang on, you're, you're right. And I'll, I'll tell you what other people have been talking about. So among all the contributors of Aftershock, I probably have had so far maybe 80% of all the contributors. So I've spoken with 80% of them until now. And these people, some of them are doctors, some of them are MDs, some of them are specialists, some of them the head of uh, SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, like people like that. And everybody has a different perspective on, especially COVID-19, that we're all in it together. First of all, nobody was expecting it to happen. Number two, the disruption on common life and all the things that we find are right around us and we have access to them. Suddenly you cannot do it. So it's been a shock for everybody. That's been a bit of a shock for everybody that you can't just go out anymore. You can't go out and eat. You can't uh, go for a meeting. And so that disruption of life Something that Toffler talks in a different way that, hey, the, the pace of change will be rapid, but it's more like a, a direction change rather than an amplification of that. What, what I think is really interesting about uh, one of the things that's very interesting about, about Toffler's book was his main thesis was that we're going through this malaise that we're going to have because the, the world is moving so quickly and you know, we, we can't catch up. We weren't built physically to catch up to how quickly the world is moving right now. But what sort of strikes me, and I think sort of taps a hopeful note for us, is that the world seems to be moving so much faster now than even Toffler expected. Yeah. And yet um, humans have sort of proven to be adaptable. And we have caught up in many ways, you know, um, that malaise is, I don't really see that as being a major part of our culture, especially when you look at younger people who, you know, people who, who grew up in the, who were born in the internet era, that's just normal and natural for them. And people who, who are, are sort of born into eras that seem natural to them and their genes are not, don't seem to be holding them back from 
surviving and thriving in the society. So I think I like that. I'm from a, I think that's sort of a positive note for us with what's happening with, with the COVID crisis. And I think, you know, when you look at this crisis in terms of like the next year, your job and my job and many of, of, of your people who are watching this, the people are frightened and, and rightly so. But if you take a longer term view, if you look at, at your work and your life over the next 10 years, then I think things become, feel, feel better. Like the, the world will go back to a semblance of the way it was before. Do you think so? I think we reached, you know, talk, and I'm going to backtrack a little bit. You, you talk a lot about, and I've been following your work as well. You talk a lot about the adaptation of trends. You talk a lot about, hey, this is what's happening down the line. This is potentially what will happen. Interesting, amazing stuff. I, I love it. Bang on. And here comes COVID-19. It just amplifies and accelerates some parts of our life. For example, web conferencing or remote work or work from home or whatever you call it. And nobody expected that to happen at such a fast pace. Now, we're all talking about, hey, this is the new normal. I don't think this is the new normal. I think the new normal is coming <laughs> until we adapt and go through this change. But I here do. we go. We have had rapid acceleration in some things and, and some things will be amazing because now we've really found out these cool things to do and, and better way of doing things. I think the new normal interests me. The tomorrow that we will arrive at after we stabilize and we come out of this crisis is something that excites me because that will be a better, faster, more efficient world. And probably this, you know, it's like going on, uh, it's like a boost. It's a shot of adrenaline that humanity is going through. And I think yeah. it's amazing. It's taken us out from that malaise and rapidly accelerated what we do. Right. You know, I see that um, I've heard people refer to this air place that we're in right now as, as either the great reset or the great pause. And I think you probably have heard both of those as well, um, and many of the people watching. And to me, those are sort of different ideas. It's different ways of looking at what we're going through and, and how we're going to come out of it. The Great Reset, I think, is talking about, you know, the kind of thing that you were just mentioning, that we're going to come out of it in a different kind of a world than we are today. And no one's sure exactly what that's going to look like, but it will be created. And then the other side of it is it's the Great Pause that... We're just sort of taking a, a few months now to everyone's just stopping their lives, not everyone, but um, most people sort of stopping their lives, pausing their lives. And then things after COVID ends, everything will get back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Those feel like two different ideas to me. Yeah. And I actually am more of a great pause guy. So I, I think that there will be changes for sure, of course. But when I look at you know humanity and the basis between the way that we act, it has to do with you know who people are. We're, we're social beings. Yeah. We're selfish beings, and, and all of those sort of core things about humanity don't change. So I'm reading and hearing so many people talk about, oh, this can be fantastic. We're going to come out of it, you know, loving our neighbors more and appreciating our lives more. And unfortunately. I think for the most part, it's BS. And one of the reasons I see that is when you look at, in the United States, the, um, the, 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 the stimulus money uh, that the government is giving to small businesses is being, first of all, it's being distributed through banks who are distributing it to their biggest clients because they get the biggest fees on that. Yeah. And it's going to publicly traded companies who are giving, who, who are giving uh, money to their investors. We're in the middle of this thing and it's not changing people's behavior. It's sort of, people are talking about, oh, it's going to be wonderful. But um, what I'm seeing is people are people, unfortunately, and in, you know, a few years from now, it's going to be closer to the great pause than the great reset. Do you, do you think a reason for that is the fact that our world is, let's say, moving fast because of technology and all of these things, distractions, and they'll, all of that is still, I mean, people are watching more Netflix right now. They're watching more television and online shows and all of that, right? So they're distracting themselves with all of these things, despite the fact that we're all sitting at home. Right. I think there could be a reason for the fact that people will go back to their old way of doing things, maybe after six months or a year or two years, is because of the world around them. It's because that's what the world around them looks like. 
And I agree with you that there's a huge possibility that people will just come out of this once they go back to their jobs and they'll feel good for a month. But then after two months, they'll, you know, it's like going on a vacation. One month coming back from your vacation, you feel you've never gone on a vacation, right? Right. And so it's possible. Yes. Uh, it's interesting. So, you know, let, let, me, let me just say something on a more sort of positive level, which is that, you know, trends, some, some trends change quickly and some change, some change more incrementally. And I think there's a lot of people who are hoping that this is such a, a big deal that it's going to you know, create a sea change in the way people act and the way the world is. And in some cases it will, but in, in, in some cases, what's actually I think is gonna happen is that more incremental change. And if I look back at 2008 after the, the, the Great Recession, um, it, it did change the way that people acted uh, in their lives, especially younger people. When I think about young millennials at the time who felt um, that maybe it's not, the, the way that they want to live their lives is not like their parents accruing stuff. That sort of led to the, the, the so-called sharing economy, yeah. people uh, not wanting to be indebted uh, as much, especially younger people. It, it, yeah. it did change people's attitudes. And I think this will change people's attitudes in a, in a similar way. And depending on, on how deep the economic malaise is, it could change people's attitudes in the way that our you know, grandparents and some of your watchers, great grandparents changed their attitudes after the Great Depression. They lived in a depression mentality the rest of their lives. That, that very well could happen. I think the key is, and I feel this is my opinion, that people who, despite these times of whatever change we're going through, people who continue to invest in themselves, they continue to read, they continue to learn, they continue to do all these things that can, so that they, they're getting ready for when things open up, they can do things better. I think they are, at, they will get the maximum benefit out of this, who are constantly on a path of self-improvement, uh, because that's what change creates, change you know, that's the other side of change is self-improvement. World is changing fast. You look at yourself and improve yourself faster and faster and faster. So I really hope those totally people right. are going to come out on the top. I do believe also that all these stimuluses that uh, governments are giving in Canada, United States, and a few other places, it's going to come back in form of taxes, in form of other things. So it's not free money that's being distributed, but of course, it's helping people keep doors open and, you know, small businesses wherever they're they're struggling so i think it's a great thing but but people also need to keep be aware that you know it's got to be paid back with interest there's no such thing as a free lunch i want to ask you about trends you know many times you probably come across people who are the naysayers who don't believe in your trends who say hey daniel i don't think that's going to happen i i don't think cars will ever fly come on tell us something different how, how do you work with those people or what's your response to those people? <laughs> um, well, to be honest, Ian, I actually don't usually get those responses, um, mainly because when I'm talking about things that will happen, I'm informed by uh, things that are already happening. So I'm using those as examples. This is how things morph in the world. Um, so uh, let me give you an example. You know, I'm often asked, what's the difference between a trend and a fad? because people often confuse those two things. And one of the main, there's a few differentiators, but one of the main ones is longevity. So, you know, fad is oftentimes something that happens, comes on quickly and leaves quickly, and a trend is something more long-lasting that you can make a business plan around. So when it comes to like wearable technology, is that a trend or a fad, wearable technology? And my argument is that wearable technology is a trend because humans have been wearing technology since almost the beginning of humanity when it was a, a sword by their side will is any particular product you know watch or headset or anything is that a trend probably not the, the, those things anything that has a brand on it is usually a, a fad or or, or 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 part of a bigger trend so by using examples like that i think that this is a way that i, I explain where the world is heading and that it's not, that's, that's why I'm not making these, you know, guesses about 50 years from now. But really what what some of the things, are uh, trends and fads that you're seeing come out of this COVID-19 crisis? Well, I think the, one of the things that struck me when you were telling me that you're speaking to people from all different industries, you know, what I do is I 
sort of bring those all together to understand the big trends because trends are not siloed by industry. Trends are about what people are thinking and feeling. And, you know, we're all looking for the same trends to be answered in every part of our lives, the, the cars we buy, the clothing we wear, the vacations we will eventually take again. For ourselves, it's about, it's about lifestyle and the way that we perceive ourselves and want to be perceived by others. So what struck me when you were telling me this about all these people from different industries is I think one of the things that ties all of that together is that we're seeing right now an acceleration of many of the trends that were already in motion. And I think that I'm sure you're seeing that as well, Ian. Um, th this is sort of a time, this, this, this culture quake that we're in is accelerating a lot of the things that were al already happening. So it's, it's not necessarily about starting completely new things. A great example is exactly what we're doing right here, talking by video. This is something that was in motion before, but is now on steroids. And there are so many examples of that across the industrial spectrum. Rightly said, there's many industries, uh, Daniel, that are, that are very slow in adoption. I, I work across different verticals, and, and I see some of them being very slow when it comes to adapting to change. For example, financial industry takes a lot of time to do things because they're inherently, they've got a complex structure, the accounting world. They're, they have practices that go 500 years back. And so for these industries, I think it's, it's a really great time to look at these new trends that are shaping the world, adapt to new ways of working, and use all of these things, trends, to create more efficiency in business. I mean, that's what technology does. It creates efficiency. It helps you, uh, you know, reduce whatever, expense, so on and so forth. So I think it's a, it's a great way to create more value and to go back to the drawing board. And I've been telling people, hey, you're doing, if you're doing nothing right now, then go back to the drawing board, strategize with your team every single day, and think of new ideas that can perhaps make your business different. And I see a lot of companies doing that as well. Daniel, I know we don't have a lot of time. Help us understand the top three suggestions, recommendations, advice, guidance that you would give viewers watching this. And we've got a diverse set of viewers uh, watching this. What should they do in order to adapt or look into trends or how to implement trends into their businesses and kind of is there a step-by-step -step approach? Is there a process that you recommend you teach? Yeah, thanks, Ian. The you know, trends are extremely powerful because they show you what customers are thinking and feeling. They're showing you about the world from a, from a market pull perspective. I think I wouldn't have a job and maybe you and a lot of people who work in marketing and sort of adjuncts to marketing, if people or business people in particular were really good at seeing themselves from outside of themselves, that's what marketers are great at. Marketers are in general, I think, are, are the specialists in seeing the business world from outside of, of, of the business world, from seeing it from the customer's perspective. And that's what the power of trends, the trends are like the secret sauce of understanding, getting inside the brain of what people are thinking and feeling and what's motivating them to act. And so in a case like we're in right now, it's, uh, there, there's a lot of motivators behind what's motivating, you know, what, why people are acting. The, the two most obvious ones are concerns about health and concerns about uh, the economy. And those two things are where we're gonna see the, the biggest changes. Just like 9-11 changed everything in regards to security, this thing, that this crisis will change, you know, everything, quote unquote, in regard to the way we perceive our health. That, that will be one of the, the long lasting effects. So a, a powerful way that your watchers can understand that is by discovering what their customers are looking for in a bigger sense, not just in their particular business. Again, because trends are not siloed by industry, their customers are looking for the same to buy or the same products and services based on the way that they're feeling and the way that they are in the world and the zeitgeist is what's happening. And one way to track those is on trend watching sites. And I'll just give a little plug for, for Wikitrends, which is wikitrend.org. It's run by the Avant Guide Institute, which is the company that I'm the director of. It's a free website that's updated every day with some of the most interesting and important trends that we're seeing come across our desks every day. And working with people like you and people like me who spend what, you know, we spend our, our lives, our business lives, looking at the, the future and what that's going to, to bring to businesses. It's an extremely powerful thing for businesses to understand. And 
Um, and I think it's a benefit that, you know, it's, it's sort of a silver lining, if you could call it that, of what we're going through right now is that people like you and me are in demand right now. Daniel, again, Aftershock is, Daniel's contributed to Aftershock, I'm in it, and we've got 50 other plus other people, amazing people who've written this book. We came together and wrote this. It's really thick. It's a thick volume, but every chapter is different. That's what I love about Aftershock. It's available on Amazon. Please, folks, if you're listening or watching, buy a copy of Amazon. And also, Daniel, tell us where people can find you and check your work out. You've given us one website, wikitrends.org. Um, tell me more if there's other URLs that we can visit. Great. Thank you. DanielLevine.com. That's uh, my personal website, but my business, I'm, I'm the head of the Avant Guide Institute at avantguide.com. And yes, you're all welcome. And I love talking about this stuff. Give me a call and let's chat. And Thank Ian, you, Daniel. So daniellevine.com, avantguide.com, wikitrends.org. Folks, Daniel is the person to go to when you want to learn about trends, what's shaping the world, where we're headed, what you should do, what you should ignore, what you should pay attention to. <laughs> Uh, my friend, Daniel Levine, uh, contributor to Aftershock, really amazing uh, gentleman as well. Daniel, thank you so much for your time. I uh, wish Ian, you thank you so much for inviting me. And, my pleasure. Uh, I, my I pleasure. Wish you and everybody listening, health and wealth and good future thinking. Absolutely. Let's hope for the best. And I know the future is definitely what we created today, what we focus on today. So folks, get to work, figure out your tomorrow, despite the disruption that's happening, and you will come out shining. Thank you so much, Daniel. Okay. Right. Thank you, Ian. Hey, friend, this is Ian Khan. If you liked what you saw on my video, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be inspired every single day with innovative content that keeps you fresh, updated, and ready for the future. For more information, also visit my website at iankhan.com. 